testing, testing. Can everybody hear me? Let me know. Can everyone hear me and see the slide? Okay, great. Welcome everyone. I apologize ahead of time. You're gonna to have to bear with me today. I have a cold or the end of a cold, so I sound a little stuffy, um, but I will do my best to, to <coughs> excuse me, to talk today. Uh, I, my name is Melissa Armo, and I own a company called The Sock Swoosh, and I do gaps. So if you've never heard of a gap before, that's what we're gonna talk about today, and we're gonna talk about today's trade, and we're gonna talk about the market, and 2019 and what to expect for this coming year. <coughs> Excuse me. And also I'm doing an open house this week before I forget. If you're interested in attending the open house, you can email me at melissa at the stockswoosh.com for access to the open house for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And I have a live trading room. I run Monday through Friday and I call out the trades that we do in the room every day. And I'm mostly short, so if you want to come and if you want to sit in and just watch a little bit, see, get a feel for what we do, um, you're welcome to do that this week. And if Kathy can put my email in the room, that would be great. So let's get started. You can make money in the market. However, that being said, a lot of people struggle day trading because they have no idea what to focus on. So I've made it really easy for myself by choosing one one strategy and even one directional bias that I mostly go to first, I'm mostly short, and I usually am only watching one ticker symbol a day. And when I do that, it makes it easier for myself. I also like to focus in the morning. Now, sometimes you can trade stocks in the afternoon if they have bigger moves. And then with options trades, you can do a trade for a day or two or a couple of days but I mostly focus in the morning. So if you have between 9, 30 and 10 a.m. Eastern time to trade, that would be uh, the ideal time that you would be trading my strategy, okay? <clears throat> and any questions as we go along, just put them in the room, okay? So we're gonna talk about how you can effectively learn, earn a living day trading, whether it's $200,000 a year, $400,000 a year, the amount of money you earn per year only has to do the difference with what you're risking. So I've been doing this for a long time, more than 10 years now that I've been focusing on gaps. And so we're going to talk about how you can earn 400 grand a year day trading this strategy and the strategy is gaps. If you'd like more information, you can email me at melissathestockswish.com. You can also call me and you can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype if you have any questions. Okay. And you can also watch me up here on Fox News and Fox Business Network. Uh, that's something that I do um, in the afternoons or in the weekends because, again, I trade in the morning. So if you want to learn how to trade for yourself, it really is a great job. And it's a great job because you can work from home, you're your own boss, and again, I don't trade all day. I'm usually in trades between 9.30 and 10 or maybe 9.45, 10 or maybe 10 o'clock, 10, 15. Only the morning is what I tend to focus on because if I don't get in a trade by 10, then I'm not trading at all. So it's very important to focus on that time period, okay? And specifically because into the open, stocks are not that greatly affected by the market. Most stocks will move with the market direction. Like for example, today the market fell. And so a lot of stocks fell today because the market fell. But that doesn't mean that stocks are gonna fall every uh, day or rally every day with the market. I'm looking for specific things. But in the morning, in the, into the open, I know that I can get a move that maybe has nothing to do with the market. And so for 2019, I really think it's gonna be a great year to trade because of the volatility. We saw a lot of volatility at the end of 2018. We saw that, but then it started out the year and now we've been rallying and it seems, oh, everything's going really smooth. But I'm telling you, hold on to your skirts because this is not the end. This is not gonna be a smooth year. It's gonna be a volatile year. It's gonna be more volatile than 2018, which I didn't think that was that volatile, to be honest with you. And on top of that, it's gonna mean a great year to actively train, which is what I do. So I'm a day trader. So if you wanna be active, volatility is good, okay? <clears throat> but you still have to get it in the right direction. So if you've never thought about trading for a living, you might wanna look into it this year because again, you're gonna get a lot of moves in the market. 
This is a chart of the SPY. So this is the uh, ETF for the S&P that I clipped this from today. Again, we ended up falling farther today. And I squished this so you could see all of 2018, beginning of this year, and then last year, uh, the previous year, which was 2017. 2017 rallied, and we had a very bullish year. We made a lot of brand new all-time highs in all the ETFs, and also it was a smooth year to trade. A lot of people missed the bullish move of 2017 because they were waiting for pullbacks, and the market hardly pulled back at all that year. It was an anomaly year, and we power trended. Then this was how we started 2018, fell, we made new highs in 2018, took till the end of the summer, beginning of the fall, dropped off, and then we ended the year in this drop off here. This is December, okay? <clears throat> now, what I like to do is look every day. Sometimes we trade the market, but I'm looking for usually a specific stock every day, and I'm determining whether or not I'm going to short it or go long it, but I usually like to short, and I'm looking at the gap. Oh, you know what? I just realized, hang on, people. IBM is reporting right now. Hang on. We're going to we're going to look at IBM right now. I just remember that. Hold on. So here's an example. And I have no idea what this is doing, but I just realized this was tonight. IBM is going to be gapping at some point right now. Let's see where it is. It could be up, it could be down. Let's take a look at it. This is what I do. Oh, it's up. Okay. So this is what I do. And again, I don't do any, look at how this is up. Wow, look at this. So I look for gaps, and then I look at the gap in the post-market and the pre-market. Now, a gap is what? A gap is the difference between the close and the open. You can see here that the close of IBM tonight was 122.45. Where's it at right now? Almost 131. So the stock is gapping up. Here, it's going to go over 131. It's gapping up $9, almost 10. So this is something you could get up in the morning, you could rate using my system to determine if it's a long or short. Now, I don't, I'm not even going to bother with this tonight, but here's an example of a gap. So what I usually do is look for these at night or in the morning. Here, here's the chart. Look at that. So nice recovery. The stock has been trading down for a while, and there it is. That's a live gap. We're looking at it right now. I'm glad I remembered that. There might be some other names out tonight, but this was the big one. And man, that is up a lot. Wow. So between now and tomorrow morning, this could look completely different. What do I mean? It could be at 140. It could be at 138. It could be at 125. So that's why I don't take positions in the pre-market or post-market, and I also don't bother rating them at night because it could look very different in the morning. So that's a watch. Anyways, what I look for is gaps, and that is an, this is an example of a bullish gap, assuming that it would be opening at this price tomorrow morning above 122.45, which is where it closed. All right, let me get back to the PowerPoint. Sorry. <coughs> okay. Sorry. I just remember that. I wanted to see what it was doing. So this is a good example of volatility. There's volatility happening right now in IBM. There's volatility that's going to be happening this year in the market. So for 2019, you're going to see a lot of big moves in stocks. Right now it's earnings season, so you have a lot of moves in stocks. And how are you going to read it? How are you going to turn that into money for yourself? You have to turn it into profit. Trading is fun, and a lot of people like to trade, and, and reading charts is fun too. But it's not fun if you're losing. It's only fun if you're winning, okay? It's important to note that people should prepare for volatility in the market for 2019, the likes they have never seen. What do I mean? I mean get ready. 2018 volatility will look like a baby lamb compared to 2019 volatility, which will look like a lion. What does volatility look like? You think something is going up, and then it goes down su suddenly. You think something is going down, and then suddenly it goes up. Volatility is scary to some people, but it's only because most people don't know how to properly read a chart. And that is what you learn from me. Okay, I focus on technical analysis. For example, IBM, I have no idea what the earnings said, and I don't even care. I'm going to read that gap, and that's it, based on the price action. It could have had good earnings. It could have had bad earnings. It has nothing to do with anything at all. Okay? <coughs> We're reading the price, and we're reading the current price. Most people also don't want to read a chart. I find a lot of people just want to take other people's trades and not really learn. You must learn my strategy in order to join my trading room. You can come this week for the open house, but if you want to become a full-time member, you have to do my class. You have to learn how to read a chart right. So if you have any money in the all, at all in the market this year, even long-term, okay, like in a 401k or stocks invested like swing trades, you really should be aware of what's coming up for 2019. 
and meet with your financial advisor to get a plan of action this month because it's early in the year and again we're just getting into the period here where things are starting to look like they're going to be just you know smooth but i'm telling you <coughs> it's not going to be that way but that's good for you as a trader volatility is not bad if you understand it and you're prepared for it so i always think it's good to be prepared that's why I look at stuff at night. That's why I look at stuff in the morning. That's why I get prepared to decide what stock I want to trade before 930. And volatility can actually be good. For example, if you're an active trader and know how to capture momentum moves, you can profit. Volatility can also be good for long-term investors too if you know the proper place to buy or even sell for profits. Many investors exited too early or missed the huge rally the market had in 2017. And at some point, they may have opportunity to not miss the next big market move when it sets up. And this is for long-term investing if you want to go long stocks, <coughs> okay? And again, any questions, write it in the room here. So this is a good example of volatility. I'm just gonna look at this. And again, this is how you're going to make money in the market. Whether you do it for a living or whether you do it part-time, it doesn't matter. It's again about profits. This was December, boom, we fell fell off a cliff here in December, but the market was still holding the uptrend. Now, many people didn't agree with me, especially we're talking on TV. People felt that the market was bearish, but we weren't. People were looking about the percentages and this and that and the other thing. The fact is the market still was holding the uptrend. And then here we bounced and flipped. Now, today we ended up closing lower. I took this this morning at 1020. We closed lower today, but I want to point out the market is still holding the uptrend. Now, here was today's gap. <coughs> Excuse me. And we shorted this. We go over this trade in a minute. But the stock closed here the night before at 137. Boom. Open in the morning was around 8 a.m. Fell, drop, broke, gap down. High up here was around 120 something. Open, fell, broke. I didn't see where this closed today, but it had a really nice move. It dropped $5 plus, And this is what you're looking to short. And again, I rated it for my rating system is 20 points. So that means it was a good short. So I have a 26 point rating system. I rate the gap. If it's 20 points or more, I take it in the direction of the gap. That's what you learn in my class. You would learn to determine if this is a long or a short. And a lot of people probably might have thought this was a long today. Why? Because it came down into support. This is the previous in support in here. This is a 20 period moving average. This is an eight period moving average. Okay. But instead, the stock sold off. So it was a short. <coughs> so what I'm looking for in the gap and then to follow through in the live day is selling or buying depending on if i want to go long it or short it but i'm looking or for institutional selling or institutional buying that's how i know it's going to go in the direction i'm trying to take it and i just play it in that direction if the gap rates well again i have to get the gap rating it has to be 20 points or more but i am looking to get it before 10 a.m eastern I'm looking to trade quick in and out in a half an hour a day. And the checklist, the checklist that I figure out, that I go through, which I'm gonna go through for IBM too, that's what tells me. It tells me if it's good or not, okay? <coughs> Any questions so far? Sorry about coughing. All right, let's look at the trade from today. Again, closed here, gap down, fell, okay? So you have this beautiful short move, and then here's the one minute chart. So here is the close from the previous day around 137, boom, fell, open, drop. Whether you got this, whether you got this, whether you got the whole thing, this is what you want to short. So you're trying to get a piece of this move, a chunk of this sell off, because this is a big move. Again, high around here, you can take it over, it was 120, came down to 115, so that is a big move. Here was the trade. 117.35, I'll go back and show you in a minute, 1,500 shares, an ad, double the position, 3,000 total, oops, sorry, 3,000 total, price then 117.58, exit was 115.20, 7,140. So this is an advanced trade, meaning an advanced risk. You do not have to have taken 3,000 shares of this. You could have taken 500 shares. You could have taken 2,000 shares. You determine your risk per trade of the dollar risk based on the size of your account. And of course, you have to have the buying power to take it if you have a margin account. Now, you could have also bought a put. Here was the call in here, dropped. You could have actually scalped it, or you could have done the trade, 
added, which we added here, got the drop. Okay? And you can see the time of the day here. Okay? Or you could have done it here and got out here. But either way, you're in, out, in, out, in, out. That's what day trading is. Okay? Any questions? So you could have did the equity trade or bought the put. So how did I know that this was going to work? Again, I don't do anything in the pre-market. I rate it. I rate it before the open. That's how I've also figure out, you know, how the market's been moving. Okay. There's been bullish gaps in the market that I've seen are getting institutional buying. In the case of SWK here, there was institutional selling today. Okay. Now, this was another one. This was last week, and I want to point this out. This was SIG. Fell in the day, we shorted it. Drop, drop. Followed through. This sold off again today. So you could have done this as a swing trade, or you could have done this as an option. You could still be in it, or you could have just done it as a day trade, which we did here. This was the 17th. Stock closed up here around 33. Boom. Got up in the morning, rated the gap. It told me it was a short. We took it. Boom. Got the drop. See the move in here. So from up here was 33. And you see here today, it's dropped $10 within three days. But the day on here that we did it, that was even a good move, okay? Because look at the price point here. Any questions from anyone so far? Again, you're looking to get a move and you have to get it in the right direction. This is selling pressure that's happening right now on SIG. And this was selling pressure today, let me go back on SWK. Pressure, 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 okay? Selling like a like a like a brick, okay? That's how you have to look at it. So, hedge funds, big banks, they're the ones that control stocks and control the market. You're never going to move a stock. I don't care if you take 10,000 shares of something. You're not going to move it. You we trade stocks with volume, we trade stocks that move, we trade stocks that are companies that you know, okay? They're not fly-by-nighters. They're things that move, things that institutions trade. So when an institution decides to go long a stock or, or sell a stock and dump it, they make a move. So we are, we are getting with that move, the institutional move, and that's how it makes it easy to profit. And that's how you can make something like today, even in an equity trade, which we didn't even hold all day, seven grand. It's about the size, okay? Now here was an option, and I'm showing this because Netflix was a call that I made earlier in the month in January, and it wasn't even uh, an equity trade on this day. It was an option. So even though you say, well, this is $300 strike or whatever, it's expensive. Yes, but when you're doing an option, you don't have to worry about buying power. It's the cost of the position you could take it. So on January 8th, right in here, I called a call for the 330 calls. I saw the Netflix would go to 330 and beyond. And so that's what it did. So the day that I called it, it was at 320, fell, fell, rallied, gapped up, followed through here. So this was a really nice move, but you could have bought the call. And this is in the option letter. The cost was not cheap though, but it was still a lot cheaper than if you would have bought the stock outright with $320 a share. Cost where one contract was 10 bucks, which was $1,000. If you sold it at 20, you made what? $1,000, 100% return on investment. So whatever you would have risked, you would have made. And this is a good trade. That's a beginner. This is an advanced. This is an option, but same concept, same strategy. This is a long though, but you're buying the call. In the case of options, you do not need then a margin account. Cost here was $10, sold it at 20, risk 6,000, six contracts. You would have made what? Six. So again, when I do a trade, I'm looking to flip it around one. Now today was more than one for the risk you will have that in certain trades. So I sent this out actually before the open because I saw the pre-market gap in Netflix and I knew it was going to take the stock to the next level to 330 and beyond by the 18th, which was in 10 days. As it turns out, it only took a couple of days. Okay. So that was a nice call. It's just another way to play it if you don't have a margin account. This was one where I saw it would go poof and it went right there. So again, using gaps to play the momentum, to play the volatility, to profit. 
So my rating system is what tells me. It's what tells me that I know Netflix is a good long or SWK is a good short or the market is higher, okay? I'm reading the gaps. So we're not reading moving averages. We're not reading Fibonacci's. We're not reading support and resistance where we're looking at moving averages for things like that and buying lows and higher highs and higher lows and lower lows and lower highs. We're not looking at that to take trades. I look at the gap. That is the prime number one thing that I do. It is the reason for my success. It is the reason that I have a high win ratio in my calls. It's the reason I make money, okay? This is what you'd come and learn from me, the rating system. And I focus typically on one ticker symbol a day. Now, because I tend to look at shorts, I'm probably not gonna focus on IBM. I'm probably gonna look for a short tomorrow. But if I can't find any, then maybe I'll look at IBM. But I'm not sure IBM is gonna rate good or not because it's too early to tell, but I'm watching it, okay? Any questions so far here? Now, I get this question a lot. What kind of trading account do you need and how much money? If you, want to, if you want to trade options, you just can open up an options account. I don't know how much money a starter account would be. I think two grand is usually the minimum, but you don't need to worry about margin, okay? If you want to actively day trade the equity trades, you need a retail account or a prop account. There's a million brokers out there to go to. You can set up an account in a day, so you need the $6,000 of cost for my class if you want to learn my method, and you need to have an account to take the trades. But I caution people to trade that don't know what they're doing because you will tend to lose if you don't know what you're doing. Most people do lose in the market. Why? Because most people don't know how to trade. It's an investment if you take my class. You're investing in yourself and you're investing in your future if you want to do this, specifically if you want to do it for a living. Okay? If you, and, I think you have to be serious about it if you want to make real money. And obviously, once you start to get good, the money, it just comes. It just flows, okay? I don't need to worry about finding good gaps. I know that I'll get them, okay? Any questions? <clears throat> now, why do I like to short? Because panic moves, selling moves typically happen quick. And so I'm an impatient person. I'd rather make seven grand in five minutes or 10 minutes or half an hour than wait all day or wait all week. So that's just me. My personality is I'm impatient. I like fast. And also I'm less at risk. The shorter the time I'm in a trade, the less I'm at risk. The less I'm at risk of the market or having to worry about other things or the sector or anything else. Okay. So I like shorting. <laughs> but we do go long sometimes, just so you know. And, you know, Netflix was, like I said, a long, but it was an option, but it was a call. I think it's important to get an education first before you train, even though a lot of people tend not to do this. Again, it's, it's part of the mentality. I think people just want to jump into the market and do it. And that's great. It's great to be excited. But common sense says that anything you want to do, if you want to do well at it, you have to learn how to do it first before doing it. And that's just common sense. And if you want to do this where you're earning a living, you must take it seriously. And I tell people, don't quit your job until you prove to yourself you're making money. There's a woman that had two part-time jobs. She did the class in October. She quit one of her jobs last year and she gave notice now to her second job. She's making approximately $1,000 a day. Again, she did the class in October. She feels confident enough to have quit both her jobs now. It's been a couple of months. When people say they can't do this, that's not true, you can. I think it's important to have a strategy that works. Not every strategy out there works, number one. And number two, it is important to have a good mentor. And I call the trades live in the room for people every day. So that is my mentorship. And then obviously people can call me and ask me questions and I have the class. But if you're on your own, I do think it makes it more challenging for you. When you have somebody to follow that's really good like I am, it makes it easier. But you still have to learn it because you're the one that has to press the button. Like I called the trades at in SWK, and if you didn't press the button to short it, well, they didn't make any money, even if you were there. Or if you had been there. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> Any questions so far? But I think it makes it a lot less stressful to follow someone. It's a lot less stressful if you have someone that's calling the live trades, which I do. And then I rate the gaps too. But you should rate them with me. You should go through them and rate them with me, okay, in the morning. And that's why you learn it. And I also think it's a lot less stressful to look at one stock a day. That's why I try to do that. And that's why if I make money in one stock, whether it's $1,000 or seven grand. I'm done, okay? Like, I don't trade all day no matter what. I didn't say, well, I made seven grand today. I could trade all day today. No, my job is done. That's it, okay? Your job is to make money every day. That's it. But you have to look at it like income producing. This is not long-term investing. Now, you can read gaps for long-term predictions and investing, which is how I've read the market, but that's for something for retirement. 
that would be something where you're in it and you're buying the position and you're in it for the long haul. That's not what day trading is. That's not what the moves are we're trading on the one minute chart. That's not what this is. That's not what the trading room is for. If you wanna be an active trader, you're chunking it out every day. It's not investing. You're trying to pull out an amount of money and I look at it per week, per month, and you look at it for the whole year and you determine your goals accordingly. And that has a lot to do with your experience and also the size of your account. So you can't risk $1,000 per trade if you have a $5,000 prop account. That's too much. It's 20% of your account. You have to be normal. Think conservative because you're going to turn your money over. And if you have a small account, you can always grow it. You can take a $2,500 prop account and grow it to five and take that $5,000 account and grow it to 10. Now, there are places out there that say you can open up an account with $500 and turn it into hundred grand in a month or three months. That's totally unrealistic, and most people are full of nonsense. Do not listen to people like that. When I'm discussing with you about making seven grand in a stock that, that's $117 a share with 3,000 share positions, you can do the math and figure out the amount of margin that you would have needed to take that trade. It's not that you would have had to take that exact position, but even if you took 500 shares, you would have made money today in that position, okay? But I've been doing this now for more than 10 years, okay? But the idea is that you would work yourself up. You would have a goal. It doesn't have to take forever, okay? You have a goal. You start trading and learning and making money with what you can. If it's $50 a day, if it's $100 a day, and then you will get to the point eventually that you can make 400 grand a year. Unless you have the money to start trading with the risk now after the class. Some people do, some people don't. But I've talked to so many people and they want to wait till they have these huge accounts to trade. Well, you're, you're missing out on opportunity to trade. And I truly believe that 2019 is going to be one of those years where you will not want to miss out. Okay. <clears throat> Any questions so far? So as I was saying, you can do options. Now, what is the benefit of options? versus equity trades. No margin requirements, no day trading margin requirements. You don't have to be at your desk between 9.30 and 10. The trades get emailed to you. You only pay the cost of the price you pay for the trade. You can still make money. There may not be a trade every day. There may be a couple trades a week, but you can still make a good return on investment. And sometimes the trades are more than 100% return on investment. Sometimes they're 200, 300. Depends how long you wanna hold it. Now, because the market's so active, I truly believe that once people have made their goal though, they should get out of the trade. But options is a way to trade. If you can't actively trade in the room every day, Monday through Friday between 9.30 and 10 at your desk, if you have another job, you would get the options trades emailed to you, you take the trade when you get the email, put it on, watch it. You can be at your job or at work and look at the cost of the stock and see if, it, see if you're up and then exit it and get out. You don't have to be sitting there at your desk each morning. So if this is something that you're thinking about doing, again, you'll be working from yourself it is important to get an education, and what I do is follow gaps, and I'm following institutional money in the market, but I do focus on the morning. If you want to be in the live room, it's between 9.30 and 10. Now, the rating system is a 26-point checklist. It measures gaps by rating them in the daily chart to find stocks to trade that have, number one, a high probability of directional bias for the entire day if you wanted to play it all day, and actually SWK did set up again in the afternoon and dropped later in the day. <clears throat> I can pull that up in a minute when we're done here. I'm looking for a big move in the day. I'm looking for early confirmation in the morning of the move between 9.30 and 10. And I'm looking for precise entries with follow through and a good risk reward. Okay. So the cost of my class is six grand. It's $59.99. That's penis compared to how much money you could make if you were with me and took my calls. It's an investment if you want to do my class. But you can be in the room this week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, during the open house for free. And again, you can follow me in the room or you can just watch. You can make money trading. You can do this for a living. I don't know how long it will take you to pick it up. You might pick it up in one weekend for the class, which is this weekend, and be off to the races. Or it may take you some time. Everyone's different. Okay, What I do is very, very, very unique. So you have to learn what I know, which is the purpose of the class. So I teach a class, it's this weekend, January 26th and 27th, and it's called The Golden Gap. It's a 26 point professional bearish gap rating system. The purpose of this system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. Or like I said, you can do it at night, but I prefer to wait till the morning. The checklist tells you what to trade, when and in what direction. And the 26 point checklist predicts the directional bias of a stock. 
one strategy, one strategy, one trade, one, one symbol. That's all you need every day to be successful. That's all you need to make money and it's less stressful. And then you put on the size and you can focus on what you're doing. And then guess what? You have less losses because people, most people have losses when they over trade and they also have a high commissions in too. <coughs> okay. So learning how to read institutional money and price patterns and gaps is the key. It's the key to what I do and it's really focusing on gaps. So if you have time between 9.30 and 10, if you are okay with trading and could work from home and can be at your computer or on a laptop and have a passion for the market, you may be interested in my strategy and checking it out. And again, the nice thing about doing this for a career is you can work from home. So it's up to you if it's something that you're interested in. The class is this weekend. It's called The Golden Gap. It's January 26th and 26th from 9 to 5 Eastern Time. Cost of the class is $59.99 US dollars. Class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. You must email me if you want to sign up. The deadline to sign up is January 25th, which is Friday at 5 p.m. Now, I have a trends course combo with the Golden Gap. You learn long-term trends for swing trading. That is $64.99 for both classes. The trends class is in February. And I'm doing an offer this week through Friday where you get the trading room and option letter free through March 31st of this year. That's enough time for people to get started up and running. They get all my calls through earnings season where we have a lot of gaps and normally there was a charge for the room and the letter. So this is a good deal. So I'm telling you people, if you want to learn something and follow someone and, and let go of all the negative, negative thoughts that you have about failing or losing in the market, it, you can do it. And January is a good time to start things. And I really think that 2019 is gonna be a good year to trade. I have just an option letter if you just want all the options trades. It's five grand a year if you wanna sign up for this. And then that class is January 31st. It's an option class. That's $800. You can sign up for that till January 30th, the day before. And I have a market report that I did. It's a 26 page PDF report for $99 where I discuss 2018, my recap 2019 outlook and some stocks I'm watching this year for long-term trades. Any questions from anyone about anything at all? And now let me pull up SWK from today. Let's just see where that did close. Hold on. <coughs> let's see where it went it went back down to the low so you could I said two o'clock wow that was exact two o'clock I said I could set up again that's exactly what I did ran up ran up fell broke again really nice move so this could still potentially be lower here tomorrow Bob, I don't have any set broker that I say is better than another. If you go to a place and they give you good commissions or a good deal on a platform, go with them or if you're familiar with charts. Honestly, I think every broker has good things and bad things and that is my two cents on that. I can recommend to you a broker if you want to email me, but it's not like I'm in love with any specific one. And the same thing with prop places. I would caution you with prop places, some are good and some are El Stinko. Now retail, you can go anywhere. Retail, you need 25,000, and prop, you need a minimum usually of 2,500. So it depends if you want to go prop or retail. Any retail place is pretty much the same. Prop, though, I would caution you, some places are not good and some places are good. So if you want a referral for a prop place, you can email me. But it's really something where you just have to have charts, you have to have a level two, you have to have a good short list, and you have to have pre-market data. Okay. And I do use hotkeys, so I think that that's beneficial too, because we do the trades and we get in them fast. Now let's look at the market here tonight. <coughs> market is down a little bit. Let me see if anything else is reporting. Does anyone have any other questions? I'm just quickly looking up. I know that we had IBM, which is up, but now the market's down, and I just want to see why here. Any other questions from anybody else? Oh gosh, they just emailed me about going on Fox tomorrow morning because of the sell-off. I just, I can't, I am sick. 
I am fighting this thing for three weeks. I'm, I'm going to have to say no. Gosh darn it. Um, I, mean, I, I just, I've been sick for three weeks. It's almost ridiculous. Uh, I don't see anything else tonight. Let me just look here. Capital One. No, I'm taking everything. I, I'm overdosing in everything that I'm allowed to possibly take, and I still can't breathe. Um, IBM, TD. The market's down a smidgen, and I can't figure out oh, Capital One. Here, let's look at it. Maybe that is it. Ooh, maybe this is Leah. Well, this I will be watching. Here we go. This is a good one. So if you want to come to the open house tomorrow morning, it's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com to sign up. If you're interested in the class or have questions, call me. 929 gap This I like a lot better, a lot better than IBM. Um, but again, I, I'm not going to bother rating this right now because tomorrow morning is so far away. It's very far. So sometimes you have something that looks good. Actually, here, this one this morning, this looked good. And then it looked like crap. So, you know, J&J &J was gapping this morning. I said, oh, maybe this is a good one. But then it, then it just didn't do anything. So that's why I really just, I'm really watching mostly between 8 a.m. and 9.30 a.m. Because something could completely change. Remember, these stocks are moving. They're moving and then they're wiggling and they're jiggling. But this is why the market is down slightly. This is pulling all the banks down. And that, if that looks like that tomorrow morning, will be good. And it's better than IBM. <coughs> GS is down a little bit. Gosh, I just wish that I could get over this thing. Does anyone have any questions about anything? I think it's going to be a good year. I really seriously think it's going to be a good year. So, you know, it's earnings season for the next month and a half. And uh, we will see what we get. And we will go from there. Any questions? So if you want to sign up for the GAP class, you have to email me to get the forms. The deadline is Friday. And it will be a good time to trade in the room in the next two and a half months and get the options because there's gonna be a lot of earnings gaps. So we will see what we get. Maybe I'll call an option in this IBM if we don't day trade it. But I just don't know if I like this here. <coughs> I'll tell you where I like this. I'll tell you where I like this right now. I like this over 135. This is like, this is up a lot, but it's almost not enough. This would be amazing over 140. 135, maybe. Amazing over 140 to go long. Maybe over 135. This is not as good as I would like to see. This is better if it's more higher up tomorrow morning, which it could. I mean, this could very well be at 140 tomorrow morning because the stock can rock and roll. But we'll look at it. We'll look at it in the morning. <coughs> Sorry about coughing. Sorry about being sick. Does anyone have any questions? Quiet group here tonight. Quiet traders. Here's my email. It's Melissa and Kathy. This is still not printing the first letter. I don't know why. Melissa at the stockswish.com. Okie doke. Have a great night, everyone. If you're interested in the trial, email me. If you're interested in the class, email me, or the option letter, or the market report, too. It takes a little while. Have a good night.